What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be working on my 5.9 Cummins a little bit. As you guys saw a few weeks ago, I was trying to fix a coolant leak that I had on this and I believe that I fixed the leak, but upon a further examination, I determined that after I drove it, I was still smelling coolant. It wasn't nearly as bad before it was actually dripping on the ground. And as you guys know, I tightened the one fitting up in here that was causing the leak. So after, you know, driving around for a little bit, I was still smelling coolant and I came to the determination that it's all seeping right here just a little bit where the fleece coolant bypass is. So today we're going to disassemble the fleece coolant bypass a little bit and see what's going on in here and why it's leaking. Now, obviously, there's probably some type of gasket in there, but we'll get it torn down and see exactly why it's leaking so this thing's 100%. The other thing that's going to be a big major project is that when I was under there looking at the coolant leak, seeing if that was fixed, I noticed my trans is leaking. So it's a Firepunk trans, and I called them up because it's leaking from the inspection cover, and they think it's the pump seal, which sucks. So I'm probably going to have to pull the train out of it and get this trans back to Firepunk at some point to get that fixed. Now, it's not leaking a ton, you know, to be causing a ton of fluid loss, but it is annoying when you have nice concrete floors and a paved driveway and it's leaking transmission fluid, standing everything up. So for now, I'm just gonna put a piece of cardboard under the truck while it sits in here, just so it drips onto there. But that's gonna be another video for another time and I'll go over, probably I'm hoping I don't have to pull a trans, but I, I assume I'm going to have to. So if that comes to that, I'll make a video on how to pull out a transmission on the floor if I don't have a lift. So that'll be an interesting video if it comes to that. But for today, let's work on getting this fleece coolant bypass off here and seeing exactly why it's leaking. So we could go crazy and loosen the upper radiator hose off the coolant bypass here and disconnect the line and all that. but for saving time and just curiosity of why this is leaking, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen these three 10 mils, pull this up and see exactly what we're dealing with. Now I know it's probably gonna make a big coolant mess all over the place, but it is what it is. We'll just take it off and see what we're dealing with here. Now I got the three 10 mil bolts out. Also what I did was I went like this and I released the pressure out of here. As you can see, it's kind of leaking a little bit cause I did that, but I also previously did that um, before I took it off just to relieve the pressure so there's not pressure built up in the system pushing all the coolant out. So let's go ahead and raise this up here and see if we can find um, a rip gasket or O-ring or more likely it's going to be an O-ring in here but we'll see why it's leaking. Now I ended up just putting a bucket on the floor because as you can see when I picked this up here basically all the coolant in, in there is just pushing up and out so it's kind of making a little bit of a mess but now I'm just going to let this drain for a couple minutes here and then I'm going to lift up this piece down here because I assume there's another one in there. This top o-ring here looks fine but we'll see what the bottom one looks like. Alright so now that we got it off we exposed the thermostat right in here. I'm going to take my light and shine it a little bit better here. Put Hang it over the top. But as you can see right in here in this little groove, there's supposed to be an O-ring. For whatever reason, it's not even there. So as you can see on the bottom of the fleece coolant bypass, it's just a flat mating surface to a flat metal surface. So obviously it's not going to seal up. There's supposed to be an O-ring in here to prevent it from leaking. It's not there. The one on the top here is there and that one's in perfectly fine shape. So. What we're going to do is go online, try to get a part number for this, and I'm going to go ahead and order one directly from Mopar and get that installed on there, and hopefully that fixes the coolant leak. I'm also having a problem that I'm going to try to flip this camera without getting coolant all over the place because it's all over my hands, but I'm having a problem if the truck doesn't want to come up and stay at temp, and this time of year the heat's not really working, so I tried to burp the system, get all the air out of it, but I assume that's 100% sucking air in there or doing something along those lines of pushing coolant out and losing coolant and I'm not getting all the air trapped in the system out of the system. So we're going to go ahead and get this ordered. I'm going to leave my little bucket under here to catch all the coolant so it doesn't continue to drip onto the floor. And uh, we'll go from there, get it back installed, get these torque back down to the proper um, torque spec. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is I have a box here of miscellaneous O-rings. What I'm going to do is see if I get one to just fit in here for the time being because I assume when I call Dodge tomorrow, since it's an older truck, they're probably not going to have it in stock. They're going to have to order it, I assume, and it's going to take some time to get in. And so my truck's not sitting here immobile for a week. I can at least move it around. So I'm going to take my box right now, see if I can match something up just for now to get this working. And uh, we'll go from there. 
like I said, I have this miscellaneous box of O-rings here from Harbor Freight, which I would not trust my life. These are just literally I carry around in my truck to get me out of a bind in case, you know, you end up getting something that you need. These are just good to have. I think that thing was like five bucks. But the biggest one they have, as you can see, is not going to fit in there. It is way too small. So back to the original plan. I'm going to call up Dodge first thing in the morning and try to get that gasket ordered. Now, Obviously, when the cool, fleece cool and bypass was put on, the gasket was either probably A, left out, or B, just forgotten about. But the major leak was coming from back in here, and this really wasn't leaking terribly, but it was seeping here around the edges, and obviously, there's supposed to be an O-ring in there. So we'll get this properly fixed, and we'll go over that in next week's video. So quick little short one for you guys today. Not really too much going on this week. Just trying to take up and fix some miscellaneous odds and ends on my trucks as winter is coming around and it's gonna start getting colder outside and right now i guess i'll come out here in the garage because we don't have heat in the winter and still have a good time and enjoy myself without being freezing so just trying to get these little things buttoned up so also in the next coming weeks i want to go over some stuff on my lvz that needs to be addressed because i've been dailying that and starting to have a little bit of issues that are known on the LBZs for going bad. So if you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a big thumbs up. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.